Hi, my name is Sean Mars and I'm an Applications Engineer with Hawkridge Systems. And today we're going to go over Visualize Standard, a photo rendering tool that you get with SOLIDWORKS Professional and Premium when you're on active subscriptions. This is a tool that a lot of people have. They may or may not know that they have access to it, um, but you might not have been creating images for your designs and your products because you didn't want to have to learn an entire new tool set. So this video is going to basically take you through all of the basics and about the easiest process that you can go through to create an image. So we're going to start in SOLIDWORKS here, though Visualize does work with multiple types of CAD files, including neutral file formats. So while in your SOLIDWORKS model, uh, know that when you export this out to Visualize, it's going to take any of the appearances or textures that you already have on here. So if you are more comfortable setting up uh, the colors and the appearances and the look of your part in SOLIDWORKS, then you can do that here. You can also easily do it, do it in Visualize, uh, but this will give us a starting place. Now for the export to visualize, we need to make sure that the add-in is enabled. So we'll go up to Options, Add-ins, and then scroll down to Visualize. Make sure that checkbox on the left is turned on. Once the Visualize tab appears, we're going to go up there, and we're just going to click on Export Simple. This is going to group all of our parts together that have the same color. This way it can be quicker to change the colors of all those parts in Visualize. So Visualize is going to open. It is a standalone product, so you can have it on a computer that doesn't have SOLIDWORKS. Uh, it could be used by a non-SOLIDWORKS user. And what you're actually going to be seeing mine open up as is Visualize Professional, which has a lot more options and a lot more control. But today is about keeping it simple. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and hit the space bar, which is going to bring us into easy mode. Before we even get started in easy mode, I'm going to go up to the top here, and in my little heads-up display, I'm going to turn my render preview to this middle fast mode. Uh, this is a good compromise of speed versus quality, so I can have a good idea of what this render is going to look like when it's done. This is just the preview window, so you can set this to the lowest quality if you like. It won't affect the end image. Now to create our image, we're just going to work our way through those five buttons down at the bottom. Uh, we don't have to do anything with the import because we already brought our model in, but if we wanted to bring in additional models or other file types to this scene, we could do so. The next is going to be the Paint or Appearances button. When we click on this, we'll have a little paint palette show up, and any colors, textures, appearances that we see in here, we can drag and drop them onto our model. You can see that we have all the ones available in this project, as well as a library that includes a cloud library that you can download from. Here I'm just going to drag and drop an appearance that's already available in my project. You can see that the image is going to automatically refresh and start rendering again to show you what it'll look like. The next button is going to be the Scenes button. This is basically the background image as well as the lighting and shadows that we have on our part. This also has a library that we can grab other scenes from as well as a cloud library we can download from. All you need to do here to use it is drag and drop a scene out into kind of the background of your image. I chose this one because it made the drone have more reflections off of it, and I just like the way it looked. The next button is going to be the camera button. This one allows us to quickly adjust the brightness as well as the perspective. which I would use in concert with like zooming in and out with your middle mouse button. As well as camera filters that just quickly change the camera settings to these preset options. I usually like using this one. The boost is my go-to. It just basically makes the image look a lot better. The last button is going to be the render button. This one's actually a little odd. You right click on it and that way you can actually choose which option that you want to use. Uh, if you use left click, it'll just use like the default option, whatever you use last. Uh, once you choose your quality that you want or what uh, setting you want, I chose high quality, it's just gonna start the render. So the visualize rendering tool is really neat because you can actually split the load between your graphics card and your CPU, which just make, means that you don't really need to have a dedicated rendering computer to use this. Now it's going to do um, hundreds, maybe thousands of passes, depending on the quality that you set. And the speed is going to be based on your machine. So this is kind of just a let it uh, plug and chug here. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward the video so we can see how long this took. 
Alrighty, so that rendering, uh, pretty simple here, it took uh, 12 minutes and 30 seconds. Um, it's a pretty high resolution, so that's nice, and I'm using an HP ZBook. Alright, that's it. I hope that helps you get started with your first visualized project. Thanks for watching.